William, a couple of questions for you. As threats continue to evolve, what policies does the Department of State have in place to ensure that training and overall awareness continue to stay pace? Steve, at State we have really three different emphases on uh, computer security training. One is your annual awareness training, which is for all of our system users uh, through our infrastructure. Second, it's um, certification training to make sure that our skill sets are up to snuff and current for all our support staff. Third, where we're really starting to put an emphasis is expanding our role-based training, which is a requirement by NIST, in that depending on the roles and the stakeholders on the system, whether it's a system owner, a computer programmer, a network engineer, or a cybersecurity professional, they're getting annual training to keep their skill sets uh, current and uh, their awareness level high. Terrific. Do you have any advice regarding the certification and accreditation process, perhaps lessons learned? Yes. Uh, since we've worked with continuous diagnostics and mitigation at State for several years now, we're really taking a different approach to how we do our FISMA compliance. In the past, we were focused on basically putting together a certification and accreditation for all of our major systems, which could be hundreds of systems. And this was more in the compliance and meet your audit category. What we've started to shift to is through the use of what we call common controls, and continuous diagnostics. Those systems that are high impact, as uh, defined by NIST, will get a traditional CNA. Those that are moderate and low will fall more to CDM um, monitoring based on security enclaves and our segmented network. And then the enclaves itself will receive an ATO for a certification and accreditation task. So instead of hundreds of systems, we'll probably get down to less than 100. This gives us our due diligence to make sure that we've addressed all the known controls. Two, gives us all our situational awareness that is required through CDM. But three, it also holds our costs down and our uh, time of execution to a minimum. So good common sense risk management. It's, it's a balanced approach. Could you tell us about other security initiatives at the Department of State that you'd like to uh, enlighten us on? We're really focused on a shift from traditional FISMA, or what I call old school FISMA, to new continuous diagnostics and mitigation. They're really two different methodologies, and while they're two different approaches, they do are they're both self-supporting. In that, with FISMA, with the NIST, um, what some people call the paper-based approach, you do do the due diligence. That way, you really have a good awareness of what it is you're trying to secure, and those things that you need to do to have good security. But it's a static approach. With CDM, it's much more dynamic. You have much greater situational awareness because you're, you're relying on your monitors, your sensors, for your technical controls. The balance comes in. Technical controls are only, say, a third of the equation. You still have operational and managerial controls that NIST requires, but you can't really automate. So we have to take an approach that covers all the pie, if you will, but yet we're leveraging technology where we can to get good real-time or near real-time situational awareness, while at the same time we can assure our system owners and decision makers that we have conducted due diligence, we have really weighed the risk, and we have a good sense of what they are signing up for when they say, I accept this risk for a system to operate on this network infrastructure. 